In 2008, the House of Cards of globalized finance well and truly collapsed after pushing its own speculative logic to the extreme. The global economic earthquake that followed left us on the edge of the abyss. But even that was not enough to calm people's appetite for more. The game is now in full swing once again at the casino table. The architects of the crisis, those who benefited from that risk-taking, financial, speculative behavior that made them enormously rich sometimes, were actually rewarded after the crisis by government subsidies. And those government subsidies were paid for by ordinary people, by the people actually who had suffered most from that crisis. Actually, most of the conditions for that collapse have continued or worsened since the crisis. So the level of sovereign debt actually is higher now than it was just before the crisis. The level of prices in general is higher now than it was before the crisis. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is higher now than it was before the crisis. And the number of resources that we have available to us is lower than it was before the crisis. So in other words, all of the factors that led to the crisis in 2008, 2009 are still present in the economy, still present in society. Economic growth, or more precisely the growth of GDP, is decelerating. Instead of adapting to this reality by reorganizing our cultural system, our cultural values and social relations, our relationship with technology and the environment, we are out of phase, in conflict, in contradiction between a culture that seeks to accelerate and the reality of the world, which is that of deceleration. Caught up in this contradiction without necessarily perceiving it, we continue to get nowhere fast. Though there are exceptions, a new world is emerging, though still invisible to those who pay it no heed. To discover it, one must leave behind the bland industrial zones on the outskirts of towns, like here in Romans-sur-Isère. In the heart of this town, which is in constant decline, a new relationship to time and money is being invented, thanks to the creation of a local currency, an initiative of an association of ordinary citizens. Today, I use the Mesure system of payment. There's a whole network of shopkeepers in romans sur isere that accepts the mesure. It might be a shoe shop or a delicatessen or whatever. We use this as much as possible to squeeze the banking system a little in our own small way. For me, it's a gesture of activism, that's for sure, because you can't spend it elsewhere. So this will help local farmers and artisans to survive. When they pay in mesure, they feel they're not really paying with money. They're keeping a certain distance away from the financial money point of view. That's how I see it. It's perfectly possible to mix mesure and euros because they're absolutely convertible. With a local currency, you have to impose criteria. You're not going to buy just anything from anyone. You have to follow the rules, so not any old how and not anywhere, because it's a population catchment area. The economy has eliminated moral questions, but in a way, local currencies bring them back by saying, well, yes, this person providing a service is a good guy. So the interest is that you're relocalizing the economy. It's like a do-it-yourself approach to the economy, taking things into our own hands. Just in little ways, it's true, but it's a case of small is beautiful. We're taking things in hand from below and deciding what to do. You shouldn't say, yeah, well, I don't know anything about the economy. Apparently, they're screwing us over. No, that's not good. You have to see what's going on and act instead of being passive. Thanks for all the carbon you're saving.
saving. We can live without it. So very grateful are we. So we say thanks for riding your bike, for making Bristol green. Here is your medal. Thank you very much. I'm George Ferguson, I'm the Mayor of Bristol. I'm paid in Bristol Pounds, it's a complimentary currency and um, I'm the richest person in Bristol Pounds. <laughs> and uh, Of course it's marginal in terms of the amount of money that's circulated in the city, but it's a way of challenging the, the, the big move to these global companies who are only interested in the huge profits for their shareholders. So, yes, we're open to ideas. We're a test bed for a new way of doing things. I'm offering the city as a laboratory for new ideas. So what we make sure is that growth is beneficial rather than damaging. A relocalized economy is a more resilient economy. In other words, there's much better resistance to external shocks when you've got a solid local economy. On the other side of the Atlantic, Times Square is still the absolute symbol of a society of globalized overconsumption. But this is perhaps just a facade. In upstate New York, people have been experimenting with alternative approaches for over 30 years, the opposite of the logic of economic acceleration. In this alternative America, which is more human but still on the fringes of society, the relocalization of the economy is already underway, inspiring new practices that, since the crisis, are beginning to spread throughout the country because they have proved their worth here on a local scale. In Ithaca we trust, yes, cash money. Ithaca Hours has been here since 1991, so over 20 years. The idea of supporting local businesses is a very important issue, not just within the, the community's economy, but worldwide it is an issue. You're not going to try to fool your neighbors. You're not going to try to manipulate your neighbors for your own gain, because you're part of a community. I don't really know where change comes from. It can come from surprising places. When this food co-op started, it was just people who wanted to avail themselves of good food. We used to have uh, oats that we would keep in a garbage bin and we would take it out and there were no cashiers, people paid for it themselves. And now it's 30 years later and this business is one of the uh, 30 top businesses in Tompkins County in terms of employing people. It employs over 200 people. And what that is trying to do is make living in America human-sized again. Lorraine and Marcellic, your orders are ready in the deli. The food is fair trade, it's natural, it's organic, it's locally produced, it's healthy, it's fresh, and it's ethically produced. One thing we do is we put local products right at eye level on the shelf. Uh, other stores actually make companies pay for that. We give this to our local companies right off the bat. We give them better pricing when we buy from them, and we take lower margin on our local products to help promote and support our local producers. We have 29,000 plus people live in Ithaca, uh, and we have uh, eight and a half thousand members, so almost a third of the people in town are members. We are trying to make our community a better place to live all around for all the members of our community. So not just for the businesses, not just for the farmers, but for the people. Many people in Ithaca have chosen a voluntary simplicity of lifestyle to take back control of their lives and escape from the tyranny of the ever faster, the ever more profitable. To achieve this, they simply decided that time was not necessarily synonymous with money. If humans created the meaning behind time and the meaning behind money, 
we get to change what the meaning is if we want to. We get to decide what time means. We get to decide what money means. And we get to decide whether or not time and money are really equal. We were founded in 1979. Alternative started in a car with a cash box. We grew to a card table in the back of the food co-op. And when I started 30 years ago, we were in a very small, rickety office up a number of steps. Alternatives was founded to serve the underserved and to meet unmet needs in our community. At a credit union, you're a member, not a customer. Everyone who banks here owns the credit union. Your money here is called shares. Those are your shares. We don't have stockholders like banks do. Traditionally, people of modest income just lose their money to fees. We don't charge fees on our transactional accounts. We have been a partner with Ithaca Hours since the start, and we collaborate with local farmers, with local builders. We do business loans for everybody from landlords to beauticians, so that we see people who work with us sharing and growing and connecting. I'm seeing real change. I'm seeing businesses that are uh, stepping up in their own communities saying we are going to build a different future. So I see, uh, for instance, community foundations who uh, maybe traditionally had all the money of their foundation planted out in Wall Street and then the small bit that they get from those investments uh, they give in grants to their communities. Now waking up to say, wow, uh, we actually could use all of this money to be of benefit to our communities. How do we use that money that's off in Wall Street to invest actually in the businesses in our own neighborhood? Today, people are connecting across communities. That's a lot of our role, for instance, is connecting these ideas between communities. One community comes up with something, another takes that idea and builds upon that. And soon you see whole regions that are they're living into being a different kind of future. La promesse, the promise of a future that is peaceful and serene is on the side of those who imagine the world differently, who say a different world is possible, when in the short term we should avoid an ecological catastrophe, mainly in the form of climate change. This is a dimension that capitalism and the present oligarchy are totally incapable of taking into account. They are out of ideas. This is perhaps the challenge of the century, to escape from a model of growth that continues to drain the limited resources of our planet, while the urgency of climate change becomes an increasingly undeniable reality.